Let's bring up our very special guest from Fourth and Long Radio. This guy does like eight or nine IG posts a day. He is very dedicated. He does a lot of great work. Ross Allen from Fourth and Long. Welcome to the show, Ross. How are you, my friend? Well, I feel a whole lot better now with that fantastic intro. So, uh, I mean, you're really good at stroking my ego if that's what we're trying to go with. But no, oh man, it's it's great to be on. And I mean, today is the day that we get the return of NFL, and it's about damn time. And a big game uh, for both teams coming up this Sunday. A really important opener that, I mean, both teams, there's a lot of the pro side, there's a lot of the con side, and it's a big proving game for either team. It's a really good way to set the tone. Um, and both teams are in similar positions with the way they are right now. So, man, I'm super excited. And it's going to be good to talk some football. Awesome. And before we get there, we want to hear all your thoughts on the game and your prediction. But why don't you briefly tell the folks uh, listening or watching who may not know what you do over at 4th and Long Radio? Of course. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the head host and the owner. And, I mean – I'll give myself all the fun titles. <laughs> That's what I like to do. But over at Fourth and Long, of course, you can find all of our stuff over our website at um, the Fourth and Long dot com. Uh, we do NFL stuff. We do um, um, UFC stuff. We do AFL stuff. That's Australian football. And that's a pain in the ass to try to watch. Of course, we stream at like 3.30 in the morning my time. Uh, so it's a whole it, – it's a, it takes some dedication. But we do all this stuff. We do a few shows a week. We got all these YouTube videos. And like you alluded to, got plenty of stuff over on the Instagrams and the Twitter. So on Twitter, you can follow us at 4th Long Radio. Instagram at 4th Long Radio. Super active. And uh, anything – we post anything and everything. So go check us out. Awesome, and welcome to our crew. Now, Hank, Sam, and I are going to ask you just a few questions, kind of get your thoughts on this game, and I guess I'll dive into the first one. And the Denver Broncos, obviously, you had the ninth overall pick in the draft this year. This is a football team that struggled last year, but one strength was their secondary. They, in my opinion, have a at worst a top-two secondary in the NFL, uh, especially with the addition of drafting Patrick Sertan, who mm-hmm. – I thought was going to be the first quarterback taken. I think Hank can agree with this and Sam probably too, as opposed to JC Horn. So the fact that he was there for you at nine, considering the Panthers took a corner is a score quite frankly, but where do you rank this Denver Broncos secondary? Well, first off with Patrick Sertan, I, uh, I was, I was like not disappointed to get him. I mean, there's, I think we lost you, Ross. Is he okay? I think his mic just got unplugged or something. Having a oh. little technical difficulty here um, <laughs> while while Ross um, regains his connection. We'll, we'll, we'll give him a minute to get squared away, um, and then we'll add Ross back once he's ready. Ross, can you just give us the thumbs up backstage when you're good to go? Oh. Oh, he's good already. Well, I'm really sorry about that. Obviously, we're not off to the great story here. Oh, good. Oh, man, don't you just love when technology doesn't work for you? I mean, I guess it's a little easier for me because we don't do live shows, but you guys are live, so uh, you can't mess up there. It looks like I did. I apologize, but we're good to go here. Uh, so let's hey, talk nothing a little, second, right? Nothing a little YouTube editing can't fix. <laughs> See, exactly. It's been enough time in the studio. Everything looks like it's perfect the first take. Uh But with Patrick Sutan, I was obviously happy that the Broncos were able to get him. He was a great acquisition um, to this team. I was a little surprised with it. But, I mean, if we throw it back to night one of the NFL draft, I mean, mean, we all remember the Aaron Rodgers rumors that were were going around. Oh, man, when I saw those when I was finishing up my my class, um, man, I was super excited. Ended up not getting him. We'll get him next season, so it's okay. But Patrick Sutan, fantastic (laughs) Yeah, I'll I'll uh, share my false sets of confidence. Uh, you know, speaking of existence takes, there. Oh, oh man! Uh, if you guys don't know, I am I'm just chock full of them. But this secondary unit is looking to be just fantastic because I mean, you got Kareem Jackson, you got Justin Simmons, who's arguably, in, in my opinion, he's the best safety in the NFL right now. He got paid handily, definitely deserves it. There, guys like Ronald Darby is good. Bryce Callahan. Uh, of course, you got um, got guys like I mean uh, Kyle Fuller. You got Patrick Sertan there. It's 
it's loaded not only with the starters but with the depth there as well and so i'm really excited and kind of like you guys are talking about i i mean i don't want to be a homer but i truly believe that they have the best um secondary unit in the nfl i mean they're up there with uh the teams around them the browns i really like what the dolphins have going obviously the rams the green bay packers I think the Broncos could have the strongest secondary in the league. They have one of the best safeties. They have arguably the best inside cover cornerback. And so I'm super excited to see what they can. It's, I mean, throw it back to the head on where it's been Super Bowl run. I remember how just historically good that defense was, especially that secondary unit. So no fly zone 2.0. And I am very, very excited with, with the defense that they got going on right now. Ross, before I get to Sam's question, I just I want to throw it back to draft night when the Broncos picked Patrick Sertan and you had this keen reaction. All right, this is Ross on the Fourth and Long Radio and your resident Broncos fan and Broncos Nation. Let's get the celebration going because not only do they bring in Patrick Sertan, the second with the ninth overall pick, a pick that I was actually pretty surprised about. I was expecting maybe a Slater, maybe Justin Fields, and thank God it wasn't Mac Jones, but I certainly wasn't expecting this, but I'm not complaining. I have no problems with this. I have no qualms about this pick because Kyle Fuller, Bryce Callahan, they're on contract years and they need some reassurance in that secondary that's been haunting him, haunting the Broncos for probably like the past two or three seasons. <laughs> you noticed I cut off the end there where hey, you made a bold prediction. <laughs> I noticed that and it's okay because we're just going to bump it this season. It's it's all good. It's still going to happen. <laughs> all all yeah that, that's a uh, that's really funny the the uh i'm so glad it wasn't mac jones thing that really resonates i, I love that yeah um the and i'm to, be, to clear i'm still okay with that still happy with that <laughs> um the question i have for you actually is related to quarterbacks so obviously you guys have been rolling with your lock for a while but teddy bridgewater is your qb1 here and obviously he had some success especially with the new orleans saints uh when um Drew Brees was hurt. Mm -hmm. So now you guys have Drew Locke on your roster still. Do you think that Drew Locke is going to have a shot to kind of make his way back up to QB1? Do you think he's going to end up somewhere else? Are you going to put him on the market? What do, what do you think is going to happen with him? Okay. Yeah, no, um, Tate Bridgewater, he's, I've liked him ever since he was with the Vikings and had that brutal knee injury that really derailed his career. Seeing time with the Saints, with the Panthers, I believe he went 5-0 with the Saints when uh, Drew Brees was out there. And to be honest, when they named Teddy Bridgewater the starter, I was a little bit confused and almost a little bit surprised by that because Drew Locke looked, I mean, it's only preseason, so of course we got to take everything we see with a grain of salt. Um, but Drew Locke, from where he looked last season to where he looked in this preseason, looked like a different quarterback. He looked so much better. He looked a lot more poised in the pocket. His accuracy was there. His decision-making was heavily improved. There are two quarterbacks like, uh, what you got to look at a lot of this? So, Drew Locke, ceiling raiser. Teddy Bridgewater, floor raiser. And this is kind of just the mentality that the Broncos are going with here. Where with Vic Fangio, so apparently um, there's some controversy. Vic Fangio, bigger fan of Teddy Bridgewater, the new GM, first-year GM, George Patton bigger fan of drew lock so they're not getting red drew lock anytime soon in fact i still think there's a great chance that we could see drew lock play this season i believe they're going to be going to the season with a not a short leash but it's not going to be a long leash with teddy bridgewater if we see him start to struggle if we see the broncos offense look limited if we see them start to look like they're wasting those weapons like Cortland son noah fan jerry judy I mean, Javante Williams is looking great as a rookie. Melvin Gordon still, too. You almost forgot about him with how good Javante Williams was looking. And a, a good offensive line in front of him as well. I mean, Nick, uh, Garrett Bowles might have been – he was my most improved player last season. He was a god-awful tackle that turned into a stud, top five tackle, top three tackle, depending on who you're talking about. Um, but the Broncos are holding on to Drew Locke. Drew Locke is still – I believe that Drew Locke is still the future in Denver – Tate hey, Bridgewater, more of just a stopgap at the moment. Kind of like the, what they've had ever since uh, Pete Manning left and spent torture. <laughs> yeah. 
that that loss of Peyton Manning was you guys had that last good year and you mm-hmm. you hung on to it and then Peyton Manning left and it's been a it's been pretty rough since then, right? Yep. Worth it. They got a Super Bowl. That, that's, that's very that true. <laughs> hey, I mean, no pun intended, but every good Colt becomes a Bronco. See what hey, I did there? It's it's a fact. I like yeah, no, I saw that all the time when uh when um Peyton Manning made that move and just one of the many solid moves that John Elway made during his tenure as GM with the Broncos, but also some not so good moves to go along with that. <laughs> I always feel like it's harder for a former quarterback who is a star to really properly evaluate a talented quarterback. I don't know if that's just me, but that that's just my take on John Elway as a GM. I don't know if it's just a quarterback. That was a problem though. <laughs> no. Yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah. But I, I, I understand that. that. Like, I guess there's a little bit of correlation there. It's almost like a, a, a boom bust. Either they're really good at you know analyzing quarterback prospects, or they're just really bad with it. John Elway, ooh, man, Brock Osweiler, uh, man, mm. ouch! Thank God he left to the Texans. <laughs> <laughs> Dodge a bullet there. Definitely. Well, anyways, speaking of quarterbacks, let's talk about wide receivers. So. As we know, Tim Patrick was actually the leader for the Broncos with six <laughs> receiving touchdowns last year. and Heavily Jerry, underrated receiver. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, no, he is pretty underrated. <laughs> Jerry Judy last year, let me pull up his stats for you. He had 856 <laughs> receiving yards, but only three touchdowns. Some might look at that as a disappointment, but when you really look at the quarterback play of the Broncos, I feel like, I feel like it really isn't entirely his fault. So what I want to know is, do you think that this is going to be the year that Jerry Jones is going to break out? Or Jerry Judy, rather. It's all good. <laughs> you know, Who am I thinking of the geriatric Cowboys owner? <laughs> <laughs> Man, you think Jerry Jones would be the last name to come out of Giants fans? I don't know. I was, I don't know. The J, the Jays threw me off. I don't <laughs> no, know. I, it's all good. We know what you meant there. Um, Jerry Judy has to 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 wear a good <laughs> amount of the blame of his perceived failure last season. Let, let's call it as it is. He. He didn't yeah. live up to expectations. That's failing. That's not right. a bad thing. That's just how it was. Mm-hmm. Gary Judy, although his quarterbacks weren't great, I mean, the most elite quarterback in the NFL, Joe Flacco, did not have a great season, per se, uh, last year. Drew Locke, if he in spots a lot of the season. But Jerry Judy had a lot of drops and a lot of killer mm-hmm. drops and killer moments. So that was really tough to watch, in my opinion. Jerry Judy, though, he's on he's on track for a outstanding season because he's going to be lined up with guys like KJ Hamler, who's just blows the top off a of defense with how damn fast that guy is. I think I think one of his fastest runs was when he was at Penn State. That it wasn't like a stop to uh, or it was from stop, but they took a forty yard dash from when he was running. I think around like a. A 4-1, uh, 40, something along those lines. So that dude's blazing fast. Cortland Sun, fantastic receiver. It's going to be great to have him. Hopefully, I'll knock on wood here for a full season. Nice and healthy. No offense there. So Jerry Judy is in a really good spot there. He's surrounded by talent, and that's only going to help him. It's only going to give him a little more space. But it's not like he needs space just because about how much damn separation this guy gets. Jerry Judy is one of the best and purest route runners in the league already. He's only a sophomore just comes down to catching the football. So I really like Jerry Judy. I could definitely see him breaking a thousand yards this season and get around that six, seven, eight touchdown range. Also good. I mean, ah, it's a little late for this, but he would have been a good pickup in fantasy late round if he could. (laughs) Yeah. I also think um, a guy like Noah Fant could potentially benefit from improved quarterback play this year. I mean, he has Mm -hmm. top tight end, uh, top 10 tight end talent. So That'll be interesting to monitor. But my next question for you is Von Miller, who returns from an injury this season. Um, He's a guy I really like on your linebacking core. Josie Jewell as well was second on the team last year with 112 Mm -hmm. tackles. But uh, Von Miller specifically, Ross, what is he going to bring to the table in this week one matchup? Because if if you're a Broncos fan and I'm looking at the Giants' two tackles, Nate Solder, who didn't play last year, and it's going to be 33 years old soon. Mm-hmm. Check Andrew Thomas, who's is coming off a mediocre rookie campaign and looked awful in training camp. Check if I'm Von Miller, I mean I might be the NFL sack leader by the end of week one. 
I am so in, like no offense to Giants, man. No offense to them. None taken. But you have two tackles that are turnstiles that are also made out of paper mache. Okay. So <laughs> if you're Von Miller, and now for one of the first times ever, we get to see him lined opposite of Bradley Chubb. You're going to see these two guys on opposite sides of the football. And if you're an offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, if you're Daniel Jones this game, you just have to be shaking in your cleats right now. If you're Von Miller, if you're Bradley Chubb, oh, man, this is one hell of a game to get things started because, like, like you just laid out, the recipe for success, it's there, and they're so right. I mean, if you, they're going to take advantage of any team with a pass rush, uh, with their pass rush and rushing the quarterback, it's probably going to be the, the Giants are probably going to be one of those teams here. Um, interior, they're a little better. Um, exterior, oh, it's not looking good. But Von Miller, oh man, honestly, I, I could see a return because if we, if we, I think the league kind of forgot about Von Miller since he missed last year. I think they kind of forget how damn good this guy is. He averages about 0.8 sacks a game, and that's above or on par with Hall of Famers like Julius Peppers, Jared Allen and um, future Hall of Famer DeMarcus Ware and current um, uh, top pass rushers in the league, Chandler Jones, J.J. Watt, and Shaq Barrett. Um, all really good players. This this guy, Von Miller, is absolutely nasty. He's so damn quick off the football. And, I mean, I don't think a lot of people saw this, but he's, I mean, if we remember one of my favorite games of all time was the Broncos versus Patriots in the AFC Championship game in uh, 2016 when they made that Super Bowl run. He was reading Tom Brady's snap count. A guy, like one of the hardest snap counts to read. Tom Brady is uh, one of the, he's the greatest quarterback of all time. He's obviously really good at, you know, throwing defenses off on not, um, and keeping them guessing. Von Miller was able to jump the snap almost every play he was on the field. And he's even led that to, uh, he's even taught Bradley Chubb that art of being able to jump the football and be able to time the snap perfectly. His get off is arguably the best in the league when he's healthy. So Von Miller, like Jerry Judy, is primed for a huge season this year, and I'm very, very excited, and I'm all here for it. He's even got a Super Bowl MVP, which is very rare for a linebacker, too. Mm -hmm. I should point that out. Well, with that game, ain't no one winning the, ain't the, winning the Super Bowl MVP besides him. <laughs> Only the third awesome. linebacker to have a Super Bowl MVP, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yeah. Or at the time, he was the third. Mm -hmm. Just really good stuff there. And also, it's going to help. The quarterback's going to have to – I mean, the quarterback's first read's probably not going to be there. Even their second read might not be there with how damn good the secondary unit is. So everything is just, like, lining up perfectly for Von Miller this season. So that's why I'm so excited to see him. Yeah, no, I think it's I think it's great to see him return. And I'm really looking forward to see him too, although – Maybe not so much against my offensive line, but maybe I'm, not week one. But the other maybe not week right. one. But I'm looking forward to see him terrorizing other quarterbacks in the ASC. And matter of fact, I actually do think the Broncos have a bit of a high ceiling. But I'll we'll get to that later. Okay. For now, though, my question is about your head coach, and that's Vic Fangio. We know mm -hmm. he's been an assistant coach for a long time, and it took him until I believe the 2019 season for him to finally get his first shot at a head coaching job. Yep. And so. My question to you is, we know it's he's obviously going to be on the hot seat because it's his third year. The Broncos have been kind of eh, mediocre the first two years. Is it really fair to put him up there, or do you blame that more on the lack of like maybe a quality quarterback play or lack of a solid team around him? Or is it hand-in-hand? Hand? Well, if you look at the quarterbacks, like like you mentioned, from uh, that Vic Fangio has had, he's now entering his third season as a head coach of the Denver Broncos, and his quarterbacks have been Joe Flacco, uh, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, among others. Uh, they've had um, some of those guys. They've had a practice squad wide receiver as a quarterback. So, obviously, it hasn't been great. Uh, and those three guys, uh, so Joe Flacco, Drew Locke, Teddy Bridgewater, um, a, they have a career um, a, or an average career QBR of 74. That's that's not good. I, I I know you don't have to be a it football expert to know that. <laughs> like I think it's like I say a lot of hot takes. I don't think it's hot take to say that's not great. Okay, and, no. and, and that's not the one out of hundred. That's one out of one hundred and fifty-four point six. 
or uh, you yeah. you know you know that Yikes. one uh, the 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 number that I don't understand how the hell they get it um it's magic uh, but <laughs> <laughs> these it, it's been a tough he's he has been in a great situation his first couple years as a head coach also he's a defensive guy so I can't really blame him for the lack of sure. offensive success obviously he's a head coach so he's going to have to bear the the brunt of a lot of it but he, the Broncos didn't bring him in to, for him to run an offense. They brought him in to bring uh, run the great defense, and he's done that the last couple of seasons. Now, it, it, the numbers might be skewed with the points given up, yards given up, but it doesn't help that they've had a god awful offense for two years and have your defense on the field for seventy five percent of the game isn't a recipe for success. So, I wouldn't say he's on the hot seat. I'd say he's his seat's definitely warm. It's definitely it, it's not comfortable right now. But Fair. I think there's a really low chance that he gets fired. Something catastrophic is going to happen. Is going to have to happen for him to be fired this season or after this season. But he's definitely primed for. He, he's easily in, in the best position he's ever been in as a as a head coach of the Denver Broncos. Way better than Vance Joseph. Look at this man having the time of his life. Um, Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I sorry, I cannot get that out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> One of the most legendary <laughs> sideline quotes of Sergio all. Depp. <laughs> Every time I bring up Vance Joseph, I have to bring up that quote. <laughs> I'm glad you guys appreciate that. But uh, Vance Joseph, like the Broncos, is going to have a good season, and he's going to get a fourth year with this team. I, I'm, I'm 90 Three and That's a half specific. percent confidence. Coach somewhere else. That's very specific. Yes. Yes. Ninety-three um, and a half. Well, yeah. I like that though. Ninety-three and a half. Nothing lower. Nothing higher. Ninety-three and a half. What's funny is like the one of the things that I remember about Vic Fangio's like I think it was his first year coaching was he had kidney stones in preseason and he coached <laughs> through the pre- through the preseason with kidney stones and I was like, "That's a guy. Like that is a tough guy. He that's was on the sidelines. Football as a guy." Stone. That's a yes. straight up football guy. Yes, that's a football guy right there. That's a football move, man. That, <laughs> mm, that was that one. was I was excellent when I was just like, oh, we're talking about Vic Fangio's kidney stones. That's a fun <laughs> storyline to be discussing. Vic Fangio not having the time of his life with kidney stones on the sideline. <laughs> not having the time of his life. Um, our last question that we have for you, um, I think a lot of people can say that I am like the drama queen in terms of I just love the drama. Um, Fair enough. And I I've, have, I've like, seen I'm, some of your stuff. I, I agree. <laughs> yes, I, I love on my own podcast. I love talking about all the tea. It's great. So <laughs> there is a bit of tea to spill here, which um, I'm excited to ask you about. So your former running back, Monty Ball, decided to say, and I have his direct quote here, um, the Giants should be a walk. A cakewalk. We should go into New York and obviously come out with a W there. So with him coming out saying that, obviously he has a lot of you know confidence in this team. Does this make you nervous to go into Week One with him saying this with all this confidence, or, or are you like, yeah, no, I totally agree with him? No, this doesn't make me nervous at all. You want the why? But also doesn't bring confidence. The reason is because who cares what Monty Ball has to say? <laughs> Who cares? Look Can't at lie. look at this guy. He was supposed to be this new all-star running back coming out of college, and he was an alcoholic that could have run the football and fumbled all the time. I'm like, I'm, I, I'm not trying to be like attack this guy personally because obviously I don't know him. But who cares about Monty Ball? Who gives a damn? Was he like with the Broncos like seven, eight years ago? Why is he relevant? <laughs> They're talking so, to him. They're trying to get him. I almost choked on, on my water after <laughs> hearing that. <laughs> so, okay, Monty. Oh, but let's let's look into the quote here. Let's 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 look into the quote. Be a little professional here, Ross. So, the Giants are not a cakewalk. They're not a bad team. They're almost underrated because everyone. I mean, it's one of the easiest teams to crap on. It just is. They're in the worst division in football. It it like. There is all this ammunition to make fun of the Giants. That's just a fact. 
also to be fair, there's a lot of ammunition to make fun of the Broncos. Neither team has been that great recently. Um, uh, thank God that the uh, Broncos have won a Super Bowl more recently than the Giants have. But also shout out to the Giants and Eli Manning for stopping Tom Brady from winning two more Super Bowls. Uh, so I always got to be thankful for them, even though Eli Manning uh, is not a Hall of Famer. And uh, okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. turn the turn the volume down. <laughs> Turn the volume down. We will not be going down this road. Oh, I know. I just had to talk some smack. He'll make it in. Uh, definitely not first ballot, at least. He might. He's going to eventually get in. Uh, but, of course, that's a different topic. I had to talk about that, being in the group with Giants fans here. Oh, it's, of course, yeah. Come on. Come on. Can, can you blame me? I it, think just... the debate is if he's a first ballot or not. The, the debate isn't Hall of Fame or not. I think the debate is where, when does he get in, right? He's I think more that's the argument. of a Hall of Famer than Tony Romo is, at least. Uh, oh, so, well, yeah. You're so, damn so he right. Has that, <laughs> he has that going for him. I'll see. I'll give him four ballots. I'll give him four. Fair. Okay. I think that's reasonable. But oh. back to the point with Monty Ball talking <laughs> um, smack in a in – a, um, Kind of in a scenario where he shouldn't really be opening his mouth here. I don't know why. Um, I mean, the Broncos cut him for good reason. Um, I mean, he was more of alcohol than Matt Prater, but at least Matt Prater was good for the team. Um, man, I really am getting personal and off the field today. That's it's not like me, but yeah, right. Shoot. Um, the, like I was saying, the, the Giants are on cakewalk. They're a little more of an underrated team just because they're one of the more made fun of teams. I'm not saying they're a great team. I don't believe that. I believe they'll struggle to be a good team, if I'm being honest here, um, just because there's a lot of things going against them, and they also play some tough defenses. I mean, you have to play the Washington football team twice, and their offense, we'll, we'll wait and see. I, I actually really like what Washington is doing this year, um, and their defense is going to be – they might even be top five this season. So that's not great. Um, and then the Cowboys, at least on paper, their defense is good, but also we saw that worked out for them last year. This is going to be a closer game. I know before I came on, we were talking about the point spread here. Was it was it Broncos two and a half? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. I think it's going to be a one-score game here. I think it comes down to – I'll take the over just by like – I'll take Broncos by four in, in this one. But I think that's really reasonable. There's a lot of new moving pieces for each of these teams, and it's always tough to get going immediately in week one. I think the Broncos have a bit more of an advantage there because – it's easier for a defense to get going early than it is an offense, typically and historically speaking. Normally, offensive lines take a lot longer to get acclimated to the season than defensive lines do. Um, so, game. Not cakewalk. It's a winnable game. The Broncos should win this game. This is a should win. Will they blow it? <laughs> There's a damn good chance there. It's the Denver Broncos. Come on now. But no, I I don't like what Monty Ball had to say. I think he's. <laughs> yeah, I agree and disagree. Um, I actually think the Giants should win this game, um, being that it's at home. I think if it was at Mile High, then I would agree. I would say home Denver. split game, the split stadium. This you have true, the Jets but... running around there. You have a black cat. That's more of a home team than the than the Giants are sometimes. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. True, That's but, um, no, the no, cat's great I, though. The cat's a great mascot. Honestly, look, I'm worried about guys. Like, uh, I don't know what your injury report's been looking like. I don't know. It's if, if looking Brad... very positive right now. Uh, more positive than the Giants, at least. I mean, uh, we have our starting tight end, which is nice. Oh no, I mean, I'm totally fine with Ingram not playing. I mean, he he could go play some <laughs> volleyball. But this, I, I'm more confident in Kyle Rudolph <laughs> than Evan, Evan Ingram. I'm worried about Saquon too, and Kenny Galladay still listens as questionable, right? Galladay's gonna play. Okay. Um, Barkley will play. Ingram won't. Ingram probably is gonna miss the first two to three weeks of the season. How's Andrew Thomas looking? Um, not too great. But to be fair, like, you know, I mean, it's preseason, right? We can only judge these guys so much. Um, I think he's mm -hmm. gonna take strides in year two. I mean, he okay. kind of has to. Um, number four overall pick. I think last year he was playing on an injury that was not noted mm. by, by the, the media, which could have deterred his play a little bit, but yeah. that doesn't leave any excuses out there to say why his play was so poor mm -hmm. the first eight weeks of the season. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where I'm at with that. But um, 
Ross, is, is there is there anything you wanted to add on the Denver Broncos? Obviously, this is a, a Pat Shermer homecoming, so I'm I, I really I really hope that um him, yeah, him, Hank. Does he get applauded when he steps into MetLife? Uh, well, your bets. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with no. I would only because of the way he treated Eli Manning. Mm. He treated him a lot better than. That's who we showed. Well, yeah. No, no, he, he. I forgot about that guy. He, he's the one who <laughs> shall not be named. But yeah, I mean, you guys get the point, right? I mean, I didn't mm-hmm. love Pat Shermer, but I liked him as a person. Just because I didn't like him as a coach, that doesn't mean I think he was. You know, I think he's a good person. I just he's more of an offensive mind. That's why he succeeded in Minnesota, and he's mm-hmm. hopefully going to succeed with Denver's offense as well. You know, there's yeah. some young talent there, so. Um. On Denver's yeah. side, isn't Bradley Chubb? Doesn't he have an ankle injury, or what did he? he did he? Um, the warrant for him and his detain um, detainment was more of an issue than the ankle. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. He, uh, that was that was a worrying situation. But no, both Bradley Chubb and Von Miller are going to be on a bit of a um kind of kind of a snap count here. Yeah. Or um um I guess a. Um, they're going to be having a limited. They're not going to be full bore. They're probably going to be mostly third down, second or first and and third down, which is an issue because you got guys like Deshaun um, Williams. I mean, in the interior with Mike Purcell and Draymond Jones, those are still really solid guys up front. So I'm not super worried. And even um, like Malik Reed is is a really solid backup. So they're not. I mean, they're going to be semi limited this game. So yeah, that's going to take them a little bit. But I still. Um, think they'll be able to find some success early early enough in uh, uh when they're still playing awesome now ross before we let you go here is there anything you wanted to add on this game i know you're predicting a broncos victory but um obviously 20 20 year anniversary of 9 11 these two teams played the night before that happened um are, are you are you looking forward to seeing these two teams clash again like these teams only meet four times a year so th- this is a pretty special moment and event that the nfl kind of mm-hmm. set it up this way i think it was a good move by by the nfl's match and his schedulers i know i i hate a lot of them because they've been piss poor a lot of the time we see teams like i mean not this season but we see teams like the chiefs play have a schedule with that's their opponents are combined like 400 win win record it's it's has been great but i digress uh roger gell i blame him for that i blame him for everything bad with the nfl because he deserves it um, hurry up and make Peyton Manning the commissioner, and I'm really good with these tangents. Um, I, I know you guys have know this, so I'll Love uh, it. focus on <laughs> on the question here. Oh, um, I don't know. With, with the Broncos, I, <clears throat> I mean, uh, it's going to be a spectacle. New York, nine eleven. Um, I'm, I'm excited for that. It's going to be a really important day um, there on Sunday. It's obviously it's, it's going to be more than just a game, so that's huge. Um, and obviously emotions are going to be flying high. It's opening day. You got all this stuff going on. So I'm really excited for this game. I think it's a really good first game for the for both the, the New York Giants and the Denver Broncos here. And all I'm saying, uh, I'm predicting a Broncos win. It's going to be a close game. I think it's going to be probably low 20s. It, it, it probably at the highest. I don't think anyone breaks into the 30s in this one. The Broncos are really talented in not breaking into the 30s. So are the Giants. So <laughs> both teams are fairly even when it comes to scoring. But for the Broncos season, at least, I have they have a high ceiling. Uh, they might be the most. I don't even want to sound like a homer, so I've kind of avoided saying this. But the Broncos might be one of the most underrated teams in the entire NFL this year. Because if you look at just the roster, I mean, maybe besides the quarterback position, but you got. Uh, really solid running back duo with Melvin Gore and Javante Williams, Corlin Sutton, um, KJ Hamler, Jerry Judy, Tim Patrick, Noah Fant, a improved offensive line here. Garrett Bowles, one of the best left tackles in the game right now. Dalt Risner, a young guy that's coming into his own and is already looking good. Lloyd Cushenberry from the center from LSU. He had a questionable season last year. wasn't the best, but um, he's seen a lot of growth. Um, it is what the, the reports are um, during this preseason. And so I've been very happy to hear that. And their defense, I mean, we've already talked about their defense. Their defense is really good. They have the potential to have a – I mean, their secondary is the best in the league. They have the potential to have a top three defense in general. And so we saw how, how good the Broncos camp is. Honestly, they have a really good defense. They can win the Super Bowl 
with a guy that's able to lead the offense, but also has a noodle arm. Um, so, I mean, you run the football, you play really good defense, and you yep. do enough as a quarterback. Teddy Bridger, Bridgewater right, right now is by far a more talented quarterback than what um, Peyton Manning was in his last season with the Broncos, and we saw just how damn good they could be. Um, Teddy Bridgewater is a little bit better at pushing the ball down the field is what I've seen this preseason. But also, he's just a smart guy. He's a veteran guy. He knows when to make plays and when to not. And if the Broncos are smart with the football. They're able to have a positive turnover ratio. I see a lot of success for them. Obviously, they're in a bit of a tough division playing the Chiefs and the Chargers twice. I mean, the Raiders. Yeah, they're the Raiders. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but their their schedule isn't the easiest, but it's also not the hardest. So I think the Broncos, they're a dark horse playoff team. Will they make it this year? Probably not. I can see them closer to like nine and seven or nine and eight, excuse me, where the 17 games and maybe a 10 and seven. Um, so I think they have the ability to shock a lot of people, but they also have the ability to lay a fat stinker this season. Nice. Um, so I'm a little bit worried, but I'm cautiously optimistic is what I'm going to go with here. Awesome. Well, best of luck to you and your Denver Broncos. I think they do have the potential to reach that ceiling if everything falls into place. Ross is the uh, host, the head honcho over at 4th and Long Radio, so make sure to go check his podcast and his pages out on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Ross does a lot of good work and Ross, I don't know how you do it, man, but like eight to ten IG posts a day. You have must some special like clicking power. Oh, you uh, want to know how I do it? I'll I'll give you I'll give you the industry secret. I don't have a life, and all I do is work. That that's what I do. I work eight hours in the day. I come home and work another. I don't know, probably six. So don't have a life. Don't get sleep. Um, and go crazy with what you're doing. And that, that's that's all there is to. Also, I mean, with the post, um. Uh, Make a lot of templates because it speeds things up. This is also true. This is also very, <laughs> very true. Good advice for those at Dude, home watching. Good stuff. And uh, I really appreciate it, guys. That, that means a lot to me. Thank you. Yeah, very hard worker. And, Ross, uh, best of luck to you on Sunday. Hank and I will be at the game. So, Ooh, lucky uh, you guys. Um, can't wait to meet up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right. Well, one thing, I will be at the Broncos-Jets game in Denver this season, so I'll be rooting heavily against your one, one of the Giants rivals there. So I, I got you guys covered in that aspect. <laughs> <laughs> and sounds, I specifically uh, chose a winnable game to, to attend this year. Oh, yeah. That, 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 okay, maybe Monty Ball has an argument if it's the Jets we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, Ross, thank you so much. I'll let you catch the uh, Thursday night football season opener, and we'll talk to you again soon. Yes, sir. Well, really appreciate you guys having me on. Like, like you said, best of luck to the Giants. I'm hoping for a good game. I'm hoping for something that just doesn't look awful. But you never know with these two teams. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having me on. It was it was an absolute blast, and uh, can't wait to talk some more football this year. Absolutely. Thank you, Ross.